Good day and good morning. Today, we will be presenting about our assignment 3. The first part is basic table measurements and table tennis racket according to ITTF. For the table, the upper surface of the table, known as the playing surface, shall be rectangular, 2.74 m long and 1.525 m wide, and shall lie in a horizontal plane 76 cm above the floor. The table surface should also include white lines defining the table's border. A vertical net running parallel to the end lines shall divide the playing surface into two equal chords and shall be continuous throughout the whole area of each chord. For the racket, by ITTF standards, the racket may be of any size, shape or weight but the blade shall be flat and rigid. The average size of a pedal blade is 17cm long and 15cm wide. At least 85% of the blade by thickness shall be of natural wood. An adhesive layer within the blade may be reinforced with fibrous material such as carbon fiber, glass fiber or compressed paper but shall not be thicker than 7.5% of the total thickness or 0.35 mm whichever is the smaller. So this is the picture of basic table measurements and table tennis racket. There are 4 stroking techniques in table tennis game which are forehand drive, backhand drive, backhand push and forehand push. The first one is forehand drive. The basic stroke that most people learn first is the forehand drive. When your opponent hits you with a deep or high ball, you should use the forehand drive. Your body should be near to the table, with your right leg further away than your left. You will need to do a back swing before hitting the ball in order to build up enough power to make a strong, aggressive stroke. Put your body weight to your back foot by rotating your body to the right. It's time to go for it as soon as the ball lands on your side of the table. Transfer your weight to your front foot and rotate your body in the opposite direction. Hit the ball at the peak of its bounce with your pedal slightly close. Next, backhand drive. When the ball is hit to your backhand side, this stroke should be used in the same way as the forehand drive. Face the table to begin the backhand drive. Your racket should go forward and upwards while remaining slightly close. Maintain a loose raise to assist you in part spin to the ball. The ball should be hit at the peak of its bounce, and the stroke is finished with your arm pointing in the direction of the ball. The third technique is backhand push. The stroke is most generally implemented for short balls, and its goal is to prevent your opponent from attacking with a shot. Begin by standing near the end line with your back to the table. The back swing should be brief and with your hand close to your chest, and your pedal should be open 45% of the time. Move your arm forward and down from the elbow with a brief stroke. While the ball is at its top, make sure you brush it with a quick move. For forehand push, it is critical to get your feet in the ideal position, just as it is with the forehand drive. The body is in a similar position. Your right foot should be positioned further back, and your feet should be shoulder width apart. Unlike with the forehand drive, when you are doing the forehand push, your pedal should be open, around 45%, so your pedal can travel under the ball. Begin with a back swing, then shift the body backwards once the ball has made contact with the surface. As you progress through the stroke, keep your elbow open and finish your pedal in front of your body. The third part is table tennis service techniques. The first technique is high toe serve. This technique is done with a player's forehand and requires player to throw the ball a couple feet in the air before striking. Next, pendulum serve. For this serve, you will throw the ball up a few inches in the air and strike the ball with a forehand swing. And the last one is backspin serve. This service is performed by striking the bottom of the ball in order to apply backspin on the ball. Table tennis is a low intensity activity that is beneficial to our heart, along with several other advantages. We will need good hand eye coordination to complete this task. As we play more, we may notice that we are improved. Based on my own experience, in order to learn the stroking techniques correctly, we will need a bat that can generate a good amount of speed. A lot of beginners' bats are unable to create speed. Learning with a bat like this will hurt our game, since we will learn to compensate for the low quality of the bat with an unconventional technique. There are a few tips that we can do to improve our skills. First of all, we must put ourselves in a good ready position. A good ready posture is balanced and ready to move in any direction at any time.
Besides that, we must practice more than compete. Before we compete, we should perform practice games with the goal of blending in a new skill or a strategy into a match-like situation. Table tennis is indeed a simple game after all. There are many techniques such as stroking technique and service technique that we must learn to master this game. But what we actually have to do is just hit the ball. Aside from that, table tennis is a fun play for families and friends. It could also help us to develop moral values that help us to grow and develop. By playing the sport, we are sure to enhance and make use of our daily undertaking in the discipline. Aside from developing and enhancing our physical endurance and strength, the training for table tennis is patient and familiarity with the sport. Besides, table tennis is a perfect sport to improve hand-eye coordination. Dr. Daniel Emmon called it the world's best brain sport because it is highly aerobic and uses both the upper and lower body. To be honest, we are just a novice and never played table tennis before. By creating this video, we have learned and know more about table tennis games and techniques, but just theoretically. We are looking forward to playing table tennis with other friends on the campus soon.